I was taught my brother is extremely broke. So I said, speaking of cash, I heard money talks. If it did, if it really did, Ryan's would be saying goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Hey everyone, my name is Chris Anderson and I am at the Science and Engineering Fair of Northern Kentucky. You know, you don't have to have a PhD or even be an adult to be a scientist. And today, students from across the region and at all grade levels are proving just that. They're here showing off their research projects in categories from biochemistry to electrical engineering and even astronomy. The winner of Best in Fair today will go on to the International Science and Engineering Fair in Anaheim, California to compete with 1,600 students from across the globe for a grand prize of $75,000. Let's check in on these scientists and engineers and see what they've been up to. All right, so we're here with Omar. And Omar, what grade are you in, buddy? Fourth. Fourth grade, all right. What, tell me about your project. What question were you trying to answer? Um, my, the question I'm trying to answer is how can a vibrating motor make something move? So you built, you built the electric circuit yourself? Uh -huh. Okay, can you show, do you, do you have that with you? Oh, look. Yeah. Because the light right now is. It's, so it's solar powered? No, it's like light it's, powered? So it's, it's tracking the light. Like, you know how it's really light? There's so much right, light right here, it's going to go towards it. Oh, so it, so it follows the light? They're photoresistors. Um, they're what makes it, the, when the light hits it, it moves towards where it got it. Oh, so so it so when the light hits the hits the photoresistors, uh -huh. it will kind of control the resistance of the motors, and it'll move around. If one motor isn't fully working and the other is, it will either turn left or right. Oh, okay. Depending so depending on which one is off and which one is on. Okay, so you can you can almost steer it around based on where the light is. Mm -hmm. And the brighter, the closer the right. Okay. The light, if the faster it goes, the so it's farther, more intense. That's cool. The farther and more dim the light, um, the slower it goes. Okay, so if, it, if we were in like a really dark room, it would, it would be kind of crawling along. All right, so I'm here with Anissa, and she has done a really cool experiment. She said she's turned milk into plastic. How exactly did you do that, Anissa? Using acid and casein. Okay, so, so walk, me through your, walk me through your process. So the process is you take a cup of whole milk. Whole milk what you need whole milk because it has the casein it's okay so you need so it needs to have enough of the of that of that casing and the proteins and all that casein is the protein in the mammal's milk it's a protein in the mammal's milk okay so you, so i get so i get myself a thing of whole milk then what do i do you have a measuring cup and you put a cup okay of whole milk in there. cup of whole milk then you put it in the microwave and heat it up okay so i warm it up then you take a tablespoon of the liquid that has your acid in it. Okay, so what acid did you, did you use? I used four different types. Oh, so you use a couple different types. So you were testing the type of acid that would make the best plastic. Okay, so what, which acids did you use? First, I used white vinegar, okay. orange juice, lemon juice, and cherry Dr. Pepper. So which acid made, the, made for the best plastic? There's actually two, and that was the white vinegar and lemon juice. White vinegar and lemon juice. Do you have any, any idea why, or does this how that's just... Because they have a higher level of acid in than the rest of the items. Okay, so they're more acidic. They're, they have a, uh, I guess, a lower pH then? Okay, so what, what ex how does that acid turn the protein in the milk into plastic? Well, right when the acid starts to mix in with the casein, the casein will unfold and break the chain that it's in right now, okay. and it'll readjust itself and connect it, in a different way. Oh, so, it'll all, so that protein will like kind of fold out and then kind of get clumpy on each other? Yes. Okay, so do you want to be a scientist when you grow up? Yes, just a scientist that discovers new things that will help our environment. Okay, we are here with Molly, and Molly has done a really cool project in physics. So tell us a little bit about what question you were trying to answer, Molly. So the Magnus Force is a visible phenomenon that relates to an object spinning through air or fluid. Spinning or air through fluid, okay. Yes. So what did you look at with the Magnus Force? So I looked at the specific curves introducing different turbulences through soccer balls. Did you watch Bend It Like Beckham in preparation for this? Yes. Uh, that is, that's smart, okay. So you, it's the curved, curvature of the soccer balls. Exactly. Okay, so, and you do, you says how much turbulence they had? Correct. So in this case, turbulence is anything on the surface of the soccer ball that does not make it smooth. 
Oh. Right. So like like the difference between like a brand new soccer ball that's nice and smooth or like one of those old beat up ones that are like right. have been in the bottom of the barrel at the gym. Perfect. Okay. So what did you find out? So I tested five different balls varying in stitch depth and just the geometric design pattern on the ball. Okay. Um, I found that the soccer ball with the deepest stitch depth had the biggest curve by the Magnus Force. Okay. So, the, so if they were, the stitches were really deep in there, Correct. you could curve it even more. Correct. Why, do you know why that is? So according to the Magnus effect, um, more turbulence of the boundary layer, which is the air just surrounding the soccer ball, if okay. you introduce more ridges in that boundary layer, okay. it'll have a greater effect of the Magnus force. Okay. So is that now, so that changes the pressure that's around the ball? Correct. Perfect. So the pressure on both sides of the ball should be equal. However, okay. um, the Magnus force creates an unequal pressure on both sides relating it to the curve. Ah, so an, an unequal forces will cause something to move. Correct. That's really cool. Right. Yeah. Yeah, so many World Cup players actually, so you know how the World Cup happens every year, they make a new soccer ball every year with new intricate designs. Okay. Many professional soccer players actually complain about discrepancies between the balls that they practice with and the balls that they use in the game. So yeah, and that would make sense if you want to bend it around right. the players. That I could, I could, I could, I would be irritated. Right. That's really cool. Yeah. So, what kind of scientist would you like to? Well, you're already a scientist, but what what sort of future science would you like to do, Molly? So I have many different ideas. Um, I'm huge into fashion. However, one thing that I love is boats. Um, boats. I, yes, boats. Boats are cool. Um, and that actually applies to this. So yeah. motor boats. Um, use the Magnus Force to propel the ship forward. Um, that decreases the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. That decelerates climate change and decreases ocean acidity. So, so, so it's we're perfect. so you're boating to save the world. Correct. That's the you know yes. I can't think of a better way to go get on a boat. Yeah, a sailor for science. <laughs> a sailor for science. Okay, so now we're here with Maria. Maria, what was your your research project about? Uh, my research project was about finding the different kinds of fat and if they would affect the flakiest and the best tasting in pie crust recipes. Okay, so you so this was a very delicious project. <laughs> yeah. So which fat what fats did you use? I use unsalted butter, coconut oil, margarine, and lard. And lard. Okay. So which which uh, had the gave you the flakiest of all the crusts? Uh, the flakiest was lard. lard. Like everyone picked lard. Oh, of course it was. <laughs> That's so tragic because like <laughs> coconut oil is probably the yeah, healthiest. Yeah. And of course it goes to lard. Okay. <laughs> so what inspired you to do this project? I I love baking so much. Yeah. And I was doing it when we were trying to figure out our thing. It was around the holidays. So I'm like, well, people like making desserts like pie crust, so why not do something with it and figure out if I could get the best and flakiest or the best in tasting. Well, and your, was your favorite also lard? Mm, actually, no, it wasn't. What was your favorite? My favorite was margarine. Margarine, really? Isn't that huh. funny how like everybody, like people yeah, are different I, like that? So what kind of scientist do you want to be when you get older? I'd want to be a, fi a physical therapist. Okay. So a little off of where I went for this. That's all right. It's, I mean, it's still probably really cool to like test something and get this data. Yeah. Wow, there are some truly brilliant and amazing young scientists here today. The judges are going to have a tough time choosing who the winner is, and it looks like they're just about done making the decision. Let's go check and see who the top scientists are today. So what was your guys' project? Senior struggles. It's basically seniors have a hard time getting in and out of cars, and we had to design a prototype to help them get in and out. And we did a cane that basically extends, and you can put it in the car, and then you can take it out and use it to walk because it has uh, interchangeable bases. Congratulations to all our winners and participants today. You guys are all scientists with no doubt many adventures in front of you. Do you want to submit a proposal to your next local science fair? Well, you absolutely should. All you need is a good question, a way to record your observations, and of course, a sense of curiosity. Maybe next time we'll see your project on display here. Thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you next time on Science Around Sensei. 
I have an audience now, so uh, so this will have the energy of a live of okay. a live show. Yeah. Plus, it'll be even better when I inevitably screw up. An adult, or even have no. We're gonna roll it again. They're competing now. God bless it. So close. Now many adventures in front of you. Man. 